Welcome back to another JML Science 6 activity. Today we are going to talk about the seasons and how the tilt of the earth is the reason for the season as well as explain why the northern hemisphere has opposite seasons than the southern hemisphere. For this activity you're going to need a lamp as well as a globe. All right so here I am in my incredibly dark classroom and I have my lamp and this is just a regular light bulb um, and I put a little um, piece of paper over it to act as a lampshade to keep us from going blind because it's really, really bright. And I also have my globe. And this is just a standard classroom globe. And you can see there's a push pin in it. And that push pin represents Washington, D.C. because when we talk about the seasons, we're talking about the seasons as they happen in Washington, D.C. So let's start with every student's favorite season. And that would be summer because, you know, we're not here. So. To make summer, we know that the sun has to be in the center of our solar system. So here is the lovely sun in the center of my table. And I'm going to put the globe right here. And I'm looking at Washington, D.C. And you can see that it's pointing up. It's not getting the direct sunlight. The southern hemisphere is getting the direct sunlight right now, which means it's summer for them and not for us. That means my axis is not pointed in the right way. This is the axis. It's the imaginary line that we're tilted on. So I'm going to move that axis. I'm going to put Washington DC right here at the sun and I'm going to move that axis around. I'm going to rotate it until this Washington DC is getting direct sunlight. And look at that right there. Washington DC is getting the most direct sunlight. So we have summer right here and winter right here. The reason why the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere have opposite seasons is because of the tilt of the earth. So I'm going to write summer right here. And the next easiest season to find is winter because it's the opposite of summer, which means it's going to be right on the other side of the table. So I'm going to pick my globe up and walk around. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set it down and oh look, there's Washington DC again, but uh oh, it's still facing summer. That means that there's something wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this axis, this piece right here, one more time. I'm going to keep Washington, D.C. facing the sun, and I'm going to move that axis. And you'll see Washington, D.C. actually get tilted away. When Washington, D.C. is facing upward, getting indirect light from the sun, we call this winter. So now they have summer. You see how nice and yellow they are here? This is their summer. That means we're getting winter, so I'm going to write that on the table, winter. Now, there's two more seasons to figure out. Now, the earth goes counterclockwise around the sun. That means it's going to go this way towards the camera right now. So after winter, it, you learn this in kindergarten, spring, summer, winter, sorry, <laughs> Ms. Voss makes mistakes. It's not spring, it's spring, summer, fall, then winter. After winter comes spring. And we'll put spring right here, because we know it has to come next. It goes into summer. After summer comes fall. And after fall comes winter. It's a cycle, it goes around. So I'm gonna move to fall, because spring makes it too hard to see. So when I come to fall, I'm going to keep that axis pointed the same way because when we were at summer, the axis was on this side. When we were at winter, the axis was on this side. And by keeping the axis in the same direction, we continue to have our seasons in a predictable pattern. Our axis never changes, which is why our seasons are every three months. Three times four is 12, 12 months in a year. Our seasons are three months long. It's predictable because our axis angle doesn't change. We're not a weeble wobble. We stay exactly angled at the same tilt all the time. And you can see right here, and I'll even hold it up, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere have equal amounts of light. This is why the equinox happens in the fall and the spring, because of the equal amounts of light. If I move it over to spring, it continues to get equal amounts of light, which you can't see it because it blocks the light. When we look at summer, and I'll move Washington DC back to summer right here, turn it around, daytime in the summer, we call this the summer solstice. It's the summer solstice because it's the longest day of the year. And we know it's the longest day of the year because we're pointing at the sun. 
this is the summer solstice, this is the day of the year that you go outside, your parents tell you to come on inside, and it's still daylight outside, but it's time for bed. The other solstice happens in the winter. We're pointing away from the sun, okay? We're getting indirect sunlight here, so this is where we get our shortest day of the year, or the longest night. This is the day of the year when you go to school and it's still kind of dark while you're at the bus stop. And when school gets out and you're on your way home, it might already be sunset. That is the winter solstice. Sol meaning sun. It has to do with the amount of sun we get. Equinox, equa, equal, nox, night or darkness. Okay? And that is the reason why the tilt is responsible for our seasons. It's the reason why the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere have opposite seasons and our tilt is also the reason for the solstices and the equinoxes.